sort of. Um, there's, we have some questions about that. It looks like on a pardon, it's not quite the same as your traditional criminal expungement. It's more like a uh, overturning of the, how do, I, how do I say this? It's an undoing of the conviction and a restoration of rights. Now we so normally, guns and stuff yeah, again, that's right. which is vote. important. It's a felony. You can't, can't vote, can't, can't own vote, guns. guns. Okay. So uh, full restoration of rights. And uh, there's a term, and I'm just blanking on it right now, but uh, what about the 400 grand they say they had to pay in fines? Are they getting so that back? We were talking about that earlier. That is uh, kind of a separate uh, part of the settlement agreement in their plea uh, relative to different allegations the government had made about civil, uh, kind of civil am amounts due under civil law rather than criminal law. So it was a request to settle monies. In this criminal proceeding, it was a request to settle money over here. And that was part of those settlement agreements that went on at the end of the trial. So, so there yeah, is no, get it back or no, no, it's no gone. I don't think okay. so. Okay. Um, you know, we're gonna. One of the things we're gonna do is we're going to talk about with them what we can do to shore up their rights to their ranch, uh, recourse that they have civilly as a family, uh, to to try and stop some of this overzealousness that has gone on in their lives. Are they in trouble or danger of losing the ranch? No, I don't think so. Um, I think what, what they don't want is the constant harassment that they've received since the 70s from the federal government and various federal agencies. And while that harassment seems to recede a little bit in a Trump administration, uh, they know that in the future it could all come back. And what they want is the ability to continue to be ranchers as long as they want to be ranchers on the property that they own without that constant intervention. Okay. That's what we're going to look at for them. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank so you civil much. recourse. Okay. Cool. All right. What type of rules? I mean, like, how would you... So their permit, their permit uh, process is still in... Um, in the administrative process within BLM, being right. reviewed by an administrative law judge right now. Uh, we are going to help review that. They've already gotten uh, an attorney out of Idaho who's involved in that right now, a guy named Alan. Uh, I can never remember Alan's last name, I feel bad, but uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna look at that with Alan. We're gonna look at other potential civil remedies for the Hammond family. And then secondarily, we're going to uh, start a dialogue with Policymakers, politicians, other Western ranch families who have gone through similar problems and see if we can't start a dialogue on how to reduce some of these problems that have been occurring too often in the West. Like what? Uh, one, like the prosecution of the Hammond family as domestic terrorists. Uh, we've got a family down in Arizona whose name I will not bring up at this time who have also suffered similar harassment relative to their permits. We've got a guy in Utah who's been struggling to access a historical uh, trail to uh, ranching properties that he owns privately. Uh, there's another family here in Oregon that lives not too far from here that's struggling with the BLM and uh, getting their permits. And all of it kind of smacks of the same type of zeal, uh, overzealousness, and harassment that has occurred with the Hammonds. And I think all of those people, we hope, are going to come together in the next year or so and, and start a dialogue about how to make sure that doesn't happen anymore. Just so people at home know, can you explain why the scheduled press conference didn't happen? Yes, so uh, the Hammonds are tired. They just got back together today and as we were coming out here to the ponds, there was a pretty significant delay and uh, they decided to turn around and head home, feeling like they'd kind of done their part for the day when it came to media. What do you think that says about just kind of where they're at right now? I think they're tired. Uh, I think they're they're both grateful, overwhelmed emotionally, a little bit tired, and uh, kind of excited to spend some time alone together. What are they sort of just, people who haven't heard from them give a sense as to, you know, what the past 24 hours have been like? Uh, yeah, so on, let's see, let me make sure I get my timeline right, on July 5th, Congressman Walden, uh, on July 3rd actually, Congressman Walden called the Hammond family and asked to come meet with them on July 5th. 
on July 5th, he came to their home here in Burns, let them know that the pardon process had gotten pretty serious, that uh, there was potentially a, a pardon that could happen imminently, and I think that was the first time they all felt like all of this time and all of this hope was about to come to fruition. On January 10th at 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning, Congressman Walden called them again and let them know that the President had signed uh, the pardon. The White House issued a press release almost at the same time, and the men were home by today. Uh, thanks uh, in great part to Forrest Lucas, who actually took his plane out and flew them home, brought them right here to the Burns Airport. Have the men, did they speak directly with the President? No, they did not. What is their connection to the man with the plane? Uh, Forrest Lucas is the owner of both Lucas Oil and the founder of a nonprofit organization called Protect the Harvest, which is a uh, organization dedicated to agricultural issues and uh, advocating for farmers, ranchers uh, throughout the United States. Um, earlier, when we, when we talked about this meeting that was going to happen at 2.30, I thought you and Rick indicated that you might have some information of what the community can do going forward to help. Right. Is that yeah, so the second prong of what uh, you know we've been talking about pretty extensively with the family is what comes next relative to their uh, ranching endeavors. And one of the things that they don't want to see is a continual almost persecution over zealousness against Western ranching families. And so we've talked about pulling together uh, some of the policymakers, politicians, and individuals uh, to come together in some form of dialogue or forum to try and advocate for a change in the way these Western families are treated and in the way we uh, you know, I don't want to use too strong of a word, but the way we probably harass Western landowners. Are we looking haven't at? Haven't there been dialogues uh, over the last years? I think maybe over the last year it started, right? Yes. But prior to that, I think there was uh, very little. It became quite oppressive. Uh, it became, uh, in the minds, I think, of most families out here who have been trying to continue to operate as they have historically, as what we would argue is very good stewards of the land. Uh, have felt uh, embattled rather than talked to. Do you think ranchers' rights are partisan or unilaterally across the country? Well, I, I, you know, I, I think if you were to ask, uh, I don't want to speak for myself, but I think it's almost it goes without saying that the Hammonds do not believe this is a partisan issue. Uh, I think they are definitely grateful to partisan individuals who see what's going on and help. But I don't think they'd ever say this is a partisan issue. Is part of the continuum that you're looking at for a redress or a reform of sorts, looking at legislative laws on the book and acts like such as the Patriot Act and so on? I know, uh, and I can't, again, I can't speak for other people. I can't speak for Protect the Harvest, but I believe that their efforts are legislatively oriented, primarily congressionally oriented. I think that's where they have focused. I'm an attorney. And when it comes to helping people like the Hammond family, I look at legal ways to help them uh, through the judicial process. And I think that's why we're looking at a potential civil action on their behalf to try and make sure they're protected in the future and that these kind of things don't continue to happen. Bottom line, even though that they're home, this case isn't over. Well, I mean, uh, that's true. I, I mean, it, and I think the Hammonds would be the first to say that the, the plight of the Western rancher or the Western farmer is not even close to over. The uh, Walden's legislation to, to protect ranchers from the, uh, the Counterterrorism Act, do you, do you, is it, have you seen any movement on that or do you know anything more? I don't. I don't know. Um, you know, I do know that, I, that uh, Congressman Walden has got a pretty strong commitment to helping out. Morgan, I was in a meeting with uh, Angus McIntosh one time, and he went over that law. Mm -hmm. the, what was it, the NDAA? Or, anyway, the terrorist, after 9-1-1, the terrorist act, that anybody that started a fire on public land. And he said that the bottom line was it exempted ranchers and farmers. So how were they charged under that law? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what Angus is speaking to, what provision he's speaking to specifically, but the um, act that governs the burning of land for the purposes of management does exempt them and does exempt any okay. criminal prosecution. I don't think right. anybody ever suspected that the anti-terrorism laws were intended to be focused on ranchers who right. otherwise had a provision within the laws so to exempt them. How did that them. happen? 
Uh, I think President Trump got it right over zealous prosecution. Are they seeking any kind of recourse? Uh, we're talking about that now. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to help them with. Good. What are the immediate plans for the Hammond family? Uh, looking at civil action and uh, trying to make sure they can go on ranching as they have in the past without the commensurate harassment that has come with it. There's a lot of patriots out here that want to contact them. Uh, would you recommend it or what's what's a good timeline for people? People want to celebrate and they want yeah. to hug them and tell them welcome home. What uh, is there any plans for a public outing? Not that I know of. Uh, I'm going to leave that up to them. I'm not a I'm not a party planner as much as I wish I was sometimes. <laughs> I understand. Um, because my first thought was it'd be nice to have a great big barbecue out here, but uh, that's up to them. And a lot of people would like that very much. Yeah, sure. A lot of people have done uh, so much work and just want to just give them a hug and say thank you and welcome home and glad to have you. So if you could just let them know that. Will do. That uh, they are really loved in this community. Well, I think from the look of things out here, they thought you might be planning a party somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, we just needed to get traffic moving. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> no, no, we, didn't mean, we were just in traffic for no reason. Yeah. We just wanted to get the traffic moving. And, and we got a moving activist. <laughs> you troublemakers. Oh, right. I feel like he stared right at me. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to go back and visit with them, and um, I'll Can pass on the love. Can you give them a hug yeah, for all of, us, all of us? Typically, it's Susie hugging me first, so oh, I imagine. Susie is a beautiful lady. If I was a touchy guy, I'd give you all a hug right now. But. No, we're all sweaty. Uh, 